Hi, my name is Jim McCarthy, and I'm here today to talk about Gabba Gabba Hey, the graphic story of the Ramones, written by myself and illustrated by Brian Williamson. It's a smaller format, black and white graphic novel, published by Omnibus Press. It was very interesting, the parallels that were running. It seemed that the punk scene was kind of happening, The it was gestating in the UK slightly after the Ramones, but the Ramones came over in the summer of 76 and did that famous gig on July the 4th, 1976 at the Roundhouse with another American band, the Flaming Groovies and the Stranglers. The Ramones almost got their first break in the UK in a sense, in terms of recognition, than they maybe did in their native city of New York City around that time. Even though their music was incredibly New York based, couldn't have come anywhere but from that kind of city, I believe and really kind of resounded with the sound of that city. And uh, yeah, I think um, it was a gestation that was happening on both sides of the Atlantic. Um, this book was a smaller format, thicker graphic novel with black and white illustration. And I think it lent itself remarkably to their story. I mean, it do there doesn't need to be colour in the Ramon story. There is colour in the Ramon story, but there doesn't need to be colour visually in their story. It is, for me, a black and white story in many ways. And, um, you know, down to their kind of almost cartoon-like look, which was very basic, black and white, white t-shirts, black leathers, white sneakers, with a touch of blue, which is the denim. Um, Brian, Brian Williamson's work, I think, in this book, the artist's work, is, is really top-notch. And I think this page, for example, of Joey walking down a New York street catches the kind of, just the kind of soiled underbelly of New York as it was then, and I think that also with my art direction for the script for the art, artist, I wanted him to use different styles in the book, which he's done. That part of it is comic art, in in the sense of um, comic art in the sense of actually drawn straight onto the page. Part of it's photo collage with comic art. Part of it's symbolic looking artwork where, for example, they've morphed into the Simpsons on one page. And I, I just think there's a lot of Americana in the book, which is very interesting. A lot of New York backdrops, a lot of street signs, a lot of hydrants. And um, I think Joey's backstory, where he grew up in, in, in the boroughs of Queens as a young Jewish boy, there's also a lot of interesting backstory of growing up Jewish in New York, which I found quite interesting and hadn't been able to write about before. There's also a very interesting sequence on page 22 of the book where Joey's mother is talking to one of her friends and Joey and his brother are downstairs in the uh, basement sniffing glue and they can hear the kids sniffing and the uh, visitors saying oh it looks sounds like the boys have got really bad colds and they're downstairs laughing their heads off and I think that that moment in the book is a really filmic moment that it just all worked perfectly well the script allied to the art that's one of the great things about graphic novels when you sometimes get that slightly filmic dynamic. I know it's more static than film, obviously, but it really worked really well. I thought it was a really funny sequence. And in some ways it just works perfectly well within the setting of a graphic novel. Another thing I found interesting again in this book, which runs parallel in some of the other books, is the, the kind of art school connection. It was also very interesting to put in some stuff on Andy Warhol, who was somebody that was a very big influence and somebody I was very interested myself in when I was at art school. And to actually incorporate some of the larger cultural things going on around them in New York at that time was, was a very exciting thing to be able to put into the book.